So now you're a made man in the mafia. Yes. How did that feel? You know, it felt good. I mean, you know, this is what I aspired to be at that point in time, and I, uh, I kind of did, you know, I paid my dues to get into that life. So, you know, when I got in, I, I wanted to be the best possible mob guy I could be, I'll be honest. I was motivated to do two things. I wanted to get my dad out of prison, and I was uh, helpful in that. We did get him out on parole uh, after serving almost 10 years, and I wanted to make money. My dad said, you know, in that life you make money, it translates to power, not unlike the real world. So I was fortunate. I had a head for business, and I knew how to use that life to benefit me in business. I was very aggressive. I brought some new things into the family that hadn't been done before. So um, I was uh, successful at, uh, in that regard. Okay, so you come in now. You're a made man. You're a soldier at this yes. point. So you don't have a crew. Well, I had a crew of associates. Associates. Yeah, I didn't have a crew of, of made okay. guys. Right. So you had, you had a crew of associates. How many guys in the beginning? Oh, gosh, uh, probably 20. Okay, a nice, yeah. nice group of people. Good size, yeah. Good size group of people. And you guys started doing crimes. Correct. Okay, so what were some of the early money-making schemes in the beginning? You know, everybody that's involved in that life, uh, you start Shylocking, putting money out on the street on usurious, you know, for usurious uh, interest rate. Uh, so okay. I did that. So, so let's talk about that for a second. So a regular guy has a gambling problem and he gambled off his, his rent that month, he needs a couple thousand dollars. He can't go to the bank, because he's already maxed out on everything. He goes right. to you, says, I need $2,000, right now. Correct. You give it to him, at what interest rate? Depends, you know, it depends on who it is and what the circumstances were. You know, for me, it was anywhere from 1% a week up to 5% a week. That's what I would charge. 20% a month? Yeah. So th that means that if you gave him a thousand dollars, he owed you twelve hundred dollars at the end of the month. Correct. Okay. Yeah. What happens if he doesn't pay? Well, you know what? For the most part, people pay, and you know sometimes you make a deal. But look, you know people that are out to beat you, uh, and you find that out. For instance, we lend money to a gambler. You know he says, "I promise I'm not going to gamble anymore," and he's going to pay. And then we find out he's gambling everywhere else around town, and he can't pay you. Well, he may pay a significant price for that. Yeah, put a guy in a hospital, hurt him. Yeah, it happens. Okay. So you and your associates are out there putting money on the street and making that yeah. money back. In my case, most of the time, I would give the money to my associates, and they would put it out to somebody else. So I held okay. my associate responsible, really. Okay. Is a lot of money made through Shylocking when you were doing it at that point? Or is it just, okay, it's enough to get by, but this is not really what my aspiration is? Well, I'll tell you, when I was, uh, when I was rolling pretty high and I had income from a lot of different areas, I had almost a million dollars on the street. A million dollars yeah. in loans? Yeah, out to various people, whether they be in business, whether they were my own guys. And I was collecting, you know, two points, maybe five points a week. It all depended. I probably average about 3% a week on the million. So it was a lot of money. Okay, so a million dollars, that's 30000 a week yeah. in just interest. Okay, pretty good. It's good money. Okay. What were some of the biggest things that you were loaning money on? You know, a lot of times in business, guy owned a, a, you know, a club. I got involved with a number of clubs. They always need money, you know. And uh, so, you, you know, you, you fairly, you got a good shot of getting your money back because they have cash flow. You know, okay. we're in the club, we're watching, we see what's going on, we got the register there, we got the guy. So I tried to, you know, make my loans to people that I knew had the capacity to pay, obviously. You don't want to give it to anybody. So people in business, normally you had a shot. Okay. And, you know, you see movies like, for example, Goodfellas, where you see these type of scenarios play out where the person can't pay and now the mafia guy is a partner in the business. Was that happening? Yes. Yeah, okay. it's, it was a way to get involved in a business. Like, there were times when, okay, I don't want my money back, but I'm your partner. You know, it's one of those things. I mean, it's, it's a way we used to get in the door, yes. Okay. And actually, your name was in Goodfellas. Yes. Well, there was a guy, I mean, I don't know if there's any really speaking roles outside of him saying hello, but there was like this scene where it shows all the various guys in the mafia and... There goes Michael. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the Goodfellas thing, it, it, it was a different family, obviously, but I was a pretty well-known guy. I knew Henry Hill really well, and I knew Paulie Vario. I knew Jimmy Burke. So I think I had some name value at the time, so they threw me into the movie for that purpose, you know. But I really, business-wise, I didn't have much to do with those guys. Okay. 